The Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Ahmed, has revealed that Nigeria will be experiencing severe flood this year based on predictions from relevant agencies. Now, the Director General of NISA, uh, Clement Nze, has also predicted that 178 local government areas in 32 states and the federal capital territory uh, will experience severe flooding, you know, uh, at, at the same time. Now, with many states and communities yet to re recover from the damage caused by severe flooding in 2022, what can be done to, you know, prevent such a reoccurrence? Now, we have David Mike Terungwa. He's the team lead uh, GIFSEP and Africa Regional Coordinator, Citizens Climate International, joining us this morning on Daybreak to discuss uh, the issues. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. Yes, you're welcome. Welcome, Dave. Um, we are that season again. We had this kind of warning this time last year that we were going to see flooding in the magnitude that we had not seen in recent time. Uh, but maybe our politicians were busy preparing for this year's election that um, that warning did not get the kind of traction that, that, that we, we had expected from uh, state actors. Um, now another warning is upon us. Uh, uh, well, the disaster came. We saw it by federal government account, about 1.4 million persons uh, were affected and over 603, uh, 603 people were killed and uh, more than 2,400 injured and damaged over 332,000 hectares of land and all of that. Very devastating figures by any uh, standards of the world. And that came and gone. We are suffering the effects now, high food prices uh, because a lot of farmlands were impacted. Now another warning is upon us. 32 states is as good as the entire country. Mm. Um, sure. Clearly, these governors have their eyes set on winning the election, and we, so we are back to square one. Uh, when these readings came out, or these projections or warnings came out, what was going through your mind as somebody who has tracked development in this sector? Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity um, to be here. And uh, firstly, that you are not discussing the presidential elections <laughs> at this time. Yeah. Uh, you are discussing a very important issue that will impact our lives and affect all of us all. Mm. Uh, because we don't listen to the science. Mm. We listen, but we allow it to pass through the other ear without taking the necessary precautions. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this forecast came. Why? the campaigns were at its peak, and most people did not take notice of it. But this is very serious, mm. extremely serious, especially at a time when there will be transition between one government and, and another. And you know that it slows down things. And we're talking of rains, you know, we already have first rain in Abuja, um, and even in some other parts of the country. And we expect that in April, there will be more rains. Mm. So what should the citizens do? Mm. What should we do? Um, this forecast is at the national level. The people are in the states. So the first thing that we need to do is to downscale this information to the states and the local government, which is always that missing link that all the time these things happen at the federal and then in the states you know there's people are not even aware of this impending disaster uh, i can tell you that most people who were impacted by last year's floods have gone back to their homes Sometimes. you know and then uh, rebuilt or are trying to rebuild back of what is left of the pieces but now it's coming again so what should they do we need to listen to the science and begin to take immediate precautions and warnings. Mm. People first need to move out of those flood plains. I mean, if you look at that report, we have it's 32 states, but there are 178 local governments mm. that are highly probable 
to to floods okay this like year. high risk areas yes very very high risk areas so have we mapped out have we identified these local governments or communities that's the first thing we should do right so that it's not just on the pages of newspaper it's not just we coming to to read out the statistics and give the forecast and then it ends there we need to identify those areas okay in abuja here for for example we know that areas around around lokogoma axis will always experience these yearly floods and that is probably due to man-made it's not even probably it's actually man-made because people build on flood plains yes. and blocked you know drainages we in the past we usually have flooding around kubwa axis but that was mainly the spillway from the the lower usman dam mm. which passes through kubwa up to the the Gogolada, uh, yes. uh, river you know so and then if you have so much rains there is no way the lower usman dam can accommodate that volume of water so the spillway will be opened so people around these areas you know need to know that there is an impending danger coming so what should they do now okay. uh, sorry just before you ask the question there was something you said about uh you know uh people now that they've actually heard about the forecast and know that uh this year's flooding will be severe they need to move out but you're forgetting the fact that there are lots of other people who have nowhere else to go except you know the houses you know by the river rhine areas so uh what does the government intend to do you know for people like that do they have makeshift you know uh, houses like the idps for them in case such a disaster comes their way so this is where the state emergency management agencies come in i'm happy that nema that is a national emergency management agency is talking about this now but it shouldn't end at the federal mm. the state management uh, 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 uh i mean uh, emergency, emergency management, management agencies need to to wake up and i appeal to the state governors, even the outgoing ones, or even the ones that have lost elections, not to, you know, to, to let this affect this last performance that they will do, you know, there is that urgent need to begin to prepare emergency camps. I mean, most states have somewhat emergency camps. I can talk of uh, Benue, but those camps are already filled up with internally displaced persons already so there is a need to begin to to map out areas that people can easily you know relocate to uh, these are predictions they are probable mm -hmm. but there is that need you won't just sit down and and pray oh mm -hmm. no we, we we pray a lot in nigeria i pray that god forbid this will not happen but when when it happens then there's that disaster so it is actually the states that is the major concern for me mm -hmm. so that the the, the 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 national can support right so there's that quick need to build some it may not be to build but construct some you know shelters but aside you know. building you know yeah. uh, what about evacuating these people because when you go to other climbs they already have helicopters and boats you know ready to you know move people especially the elderly out of these places to a safer location that's that's why we're saying now that in order to prevent those expenses that we warrant you using helicopters and you know to move people you move them now that's there is no immediate urgency all right you will still have between uh maybe an, a space of a month two months before the rains will come in okay and so these people need to be relocated you know at, at this time but more importantly there is also that need for the people themselves right without necessarily waiting for government to begin to prepare mm. for the impending dangers because usually when government don't come we will just cry it, it will affect you right and your family mm. so within the fct for example what do we need to do all our drainages are already blocked you check go around and see they are blocked the the, the spillway i was talking about in, in kubwa that that river is it's a refuse dump mm. So what happens when the rains come? 
water will always find a way to pass, mm -hmm. right? So, but if they are, if it's blocked, what happens? People's homes will get flooded. So, first is for us to begin to clean out our drainages within our homes. At least this, these are things that are within us that we can do before we begin to wait for, for, for the government. Mm. Dave, um, listening to the government last year, they were blaming climate change and increased rainfall. And I was wondering whether blaming was, was, was enough. Um, climate change is, is what it is. These warnings have been there for over a decade. That the climate is warming up, the ice are melting, the water levels are rising. And because every time these warnings came, maybe they were coming from white people, and we were thinking that they were the ones living next to the Atlantic and the Antarcticas, that probably before it gets to us, it would have fizzled out. But the reality we live today is that whatever happens in Australia impacts Nigeria. Whatever happens in America takes its toll on us. From all your engagement, does it feel like the, the government, uh, you know, and especially the ministries that are concerned, do not understand this impact? Is it that they don't understand that this is no longer an emergency? That the weather patterns have changed, perhaps for the foreseeable future? and that we should be working towards a more permanent solution with the way we design our roads. If the roads were designed with previous weather in mind that can withstand whatever was ever, we have three times that, that distortion now. So if you build roads with those mentality, they, they wouldn't last one year. The, weather, the, the, the water planes, maybe they are not the sizes we used to know. We probably need to raise uh, expand the, the water plains now to where people used to consider as safe zones to, to permanently move away. It's not a question of going out when the rains have subsided and returning only to, to move out again. You'll just mm. be wasting your energy. So, yeah. is it that we don't understand these things? Or there is a complete unwillingness on the part of the government to do these things? Or because of the financial implication to embark on what is a more permanent solution, we have decided to just live with whatever nature throws at us? What do you think is the problem? So one of the missing links to solve climate change is the lack of political will. And one of the ways we can build political will is to vote for those candidates who have clear climate action plans. Mm. If you vote for a candidate who is a climate denier, as your state governor or members of the House of Assembly, who will ignore scientific warnings like this, then you are doing yourself no good. Mm -hmm. So the power is also on us as citizens. The, the truth is that many of our politicians, uh, sometimes I say they pretend mm -hmm. to know these issues, but many do not. Uh, many ignore it intentionally, and that is where the issue is. Climate is changing, so we too That's must true. change. We must change the way we plan. We must change the way our food is grown. We must change our energy sources. We must change our building patterns. Mm -hmm. We must even change our way of life. For example, the heat wave is here. Everybody is feeling the impact. You know it's very hot. Will you go out taking very hot water? Mm. No. Will you go lock yourself inside and stay inside? No, you will suffocate, right? Mm -hmm. You're looking for a cool place to stay. And what is the best if there is no electricity? Is to stay under a shade. Mm. Do you have a tree around your house? Do you have trees within your community that you can live in? Or you can go and cool yourself up in? Mm. Your house, is it well ventilated enough that at night, even without electricity, you can have some cool air? How do you dress, you know, in, the, in this time? So that, these are simple things that we need to do as citizens. Mm. When the floods come, a lot of things will be impacted. First, it is the food, like you mentioned. Uh, unfortunately, if our farmers don't get this information on time, 
many of them will go grow food in those same floodplains. And then the rains will come and wash, them and wash away everything. So what is the impact on national food security? Mm -hmm. You know that. We are already suffering the impact of last yes, year's yes. own. Right? So these farmers should right now be educated to understand that if it's possible to delay or it's possible to go into irrigation, right? Or drought resistance. Or very drought, the, well, in this case, it's not drought now. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, 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 if there's anything like flood resistant <laughs> varieties, right. of course, there are some, some rice uh, uh, that can perform under you know those under those conditions but of course we know that growing food under a controlled environment is actually the best than depending on rain that the patterns have changed and you are not even sure when to plant and, and all of that so a lot of farmers lost heavily mm -hmm. last year they are just recovering you know so they shouldn't you know do uh, those same mistakes that mm -hmm. they did uh, last year and that's why there is that need that we should step down this information we should downscale at the state level and that's why I'm calling more of the state government in this case because that's where the farmers are that's where the people are that's where the infrastructure mm. uh, uh, is I mean if we know that this is a floodplain I mean this is dry season people are building houses and you know this is a floodplain mm. and you intentionally go and build a house there in fact who gave you the approval mm. Mm. All right. Well, um, while we're still trying to enlighten the people, uh, as you, you talked about uh, some of the drainages being blocked, and you also talked about you know building in riverine areas or flood plains. Now, aside that, what other factors actually makes a community vulnerable to flooding? So you you've answered that already by saying that these communities, the, the geography, the relief right uh, if you know that you are within a mountainous area you know that this is a flood plain and then you build your your homes or you farm in those areas mm. uh, with climate change i mean in the past people lived in those areas for decades but climate has changed and now we have more inflow of of water right rainfall so when rains come the volume is now more than the rate of infiltration. Mm. So what happens is that there is runoff. And then when there is heavy runoff, uh, and then naturally, water would follow the natural courses, you know, and pass into the streams and then end up in the, in the, in the big rivers and, of course, in the Atlantic. But in this case, you have more volume of water, you have this natural water path distorted, right, through our human activities. Sometimes even our farms, sometimes buildings, you know, and then these communities are exposed. Their infrastructure is weak. Many of them cannot build, you know, mud, mud blocks mm. as it is. Their houses are not, you know, with, with concrete as such. And of course, one rainfall and everything is, is totally uh, wiped out. Uh, they have also contributed, again, when you have trees around your okay. communities, they help your, in, in reducing the, the runoff, in reducing the speed, in reducing the, the, the flow. Mm. But all of this is completely gone. Check out the country right mm. now. Where do we really have a forest? Mm. Where everywhere is, 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 is deforested, deforested, you know, so it's further exposed these communities to the impact of, of flooding, and that's why the impact is, is severe than it used to be. Dave, it, it's uh, listening to you would suggest that um, we, we, our understanding or realization of the impact of, of, of climate change is, is hitting us very late in the day. Not for the absence of this information, uh, but like you said, living in denial and all. Um, but since this is the reality that is upon us, how can we build climate champions? 
uh, if we have lost it with the generations that are going, what, what, how do we capture these ones that are coming to begin to live and adapt to the realities that, because the future belongs, belongs to them. Do we have sufficient number of people like you um, who are teaching these realities in schools, who are helping to take this evangelism, climate evangelization, uh, to the places where they should be? Do we have people like you who, in the National Assembly, who would look at everything that is being done, whether it is road designs or contract approval, and begin to draw the attentions of approving authorities to the absence of climate considerations? Do we have sufficient funding supporting this evangelization? What exactly do we need to do? This is a very uh, brilliant question, and I, I believe that we all should be climate champions. Not just people like me, there is, this is just me, but there are so many others out there. But all of us, you, the journalists, the, 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 the religious people, you know how strong they are. These uh, pastor and general mm -hmm. elections have also shown how strong, you know, their the voices, puppets, uh, you know, uh, uh, is. We all need to be climate and environmental champions because these issues affect us all. Mm. He, climate impacts knows no political party. He mm. knows no religion. When the floods come, it will impact both the Christian and the Muslim. Religion. It will impact both the APC, the PDP, the <laughs> Labour Party. Everybody mm. is, 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 will be affected. Mm. So, or is currently being impacted, affected already. Mm. So, we all must be champions and that is why i said initially that what is lacking is the lack of political will and the only way we can build political will is for us citizens to keep these issues in the front burner mm. in the coming days we would be setting an agenda for the new administration who should we have as a minister for environment mm. should it just be one of those politicians who will just be given that position to be compensated or mm. should it be a technocrat someone who understands these issues and the urgency of it this is where it starts from and that's what we're talking of the political will those in the national assembly who would make the budget approve the budget you know if they understand the issues they know that you need more money in this sector you need more money in this area you know and that's why there is a need for all of us to speak to these people all right those in the national assembly especially those in the ministries that this is the biggest issue of our time an issue that affects your health and an issue an issue that affects your food, issue that affects virtually everything concerning your life. Mm. Without climate action, we cannot achieve the sustainable development goals. Mm. Right? So, there is that urgent need for us to advocate for climate actions. But not just advocating that we individually should take some actions to help us build resilience. What mm. we are talking about in this part of to, our yes, world. I was actually going to ask, will we get to that point? Will Nigeria actually get to that point where they can actually build, you know, its way to flood resilience? We do not have a choice than to do so. The flooding is also an advantage. I just returned from Kenya. This country has not had rains for nearly three years mm. in most parts of the country, mm. right? They are praying. I mean, <laughs> two weeks ago, the, the, the president organized the National Day of Prayer for rains. Mm. We are preparing for floods. So we have water. What do we do with it? We mm. allow it flow mm -hmm. and go. We're talking of water harvesting. Harvest some of this water. If you do some earth dams, it may not be 
the mega dams i know there's big talk about mm. the big mega dams mm. but if you have some small earth dams you know they will help in, in reducing the flow of this water that will cause flooding in, in, in many places mm. but what do you also do with these dams irrigation fishery so you are creating jobs you know you are feeding our people so it's not just about the problems but it's, it's taking advantage of the problems when you talked about dam an aspect of this conversation painful as it were uh, came to mind the cameroon dam we were told stories of how there was um, a regional arrangement that would help arrest uh, the, the the magnitude of this 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 water body uh, our brothers from the other side kept to their own um, side of the arrangement and built it down we here failed to do ours but every time they open the dam the government is quick to tell us in a way i seem to suggest that this problem is not ours it's coming from our <laughs> neighbors <laughs> but like you said the spillways there are limits to which those dams can keep and at some point they have to open the spillways and as we were told by even communities in Adamawa and the rest of them, that their announcements are made, notices are served on people living on that plane well ahead of time that we are preparing to open to minimize it. But we sort of, we, we feel helpless until that dam is open in addition to the heavy uh, rainwaters and that damage is caused all through down to Benue State. And then we we'll come back and start ruining our chances and complaining as if it's a football match that we have lost to, <laughs> we have lost to the Cameroons. Mm. What, yeah. what can we do with that situation? Dams are not something we can build overnight. Um, so uh, for the short to medium term, how can we avert that particular crisis on the Adamawa Plain down to the Benue uh, uh, region? What, what can we do to reduce that calamity? <laughs> hmm. Um, this is a very heavy question. Uh, as environmentalists, sometimes we are against the building of very heavy dams because of the environmental impact it has on biodiversity mm -hmm. and, or, and other forms of lives, other forms of lives that we don't consider important, mm -hmm. but they are very important to our lives and to the ecosystem. You know, and that's why we go for small at dams mm -hmm. but in this situation you know there are two things that could be done if you pass around um, river benue and you see the quantum of sand, sand. that river needs to be desisted you know so that you have more volume of water mm. if the river is able to contain more volume of water mm. so that it does not you know uh, break and enter into communities and, and homes um we you know it, it's 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 um a very big question for me because at some point i'm also against dredging because mm. when you dredge a lot you are distorting the entire ecosystem but of course in some cases you have to mm -hmm. in this case look at from that from from yola all the way down the volume in fact the whole of that river has been turned into a waste dump mm -hmm. all the plastics that have been never made that have gone to adamawa state apart from the ones that have been burnt mm -hmm. have ended up in that mm -hmm. river the same thing with benway the same thing with mm -hmm. along the channel in in in, in taraba state mm -hmm. so we need to clean up that river it will you know open up and give more space but if we are to construct it down it's it's very expensive um we will have no choice than to borrow again and we, we are against, <laughs> we're against borrowing but the advantages are so are so many the advantages are many in terms of hydroelectricity mm -hmm. we can get from that you can get irrigation you know job creation and and so many other things so yeah. these are some of the things the quick thing we should do is to clean up those mm. those, channels. those channels you know when he actually talked about you know kenya praying for rain for three days or three years it reminded me of uh, a video i saw of uh, some other climbs especially dubai that actually make their own rain to beat the heat you know it's so cloud it's seeding right yes. yes they make their own i'm not even talking about nigeria you know 
<laughs> or Africa, you know, get into that, uh, you know, uh, technology, getting that technology even uh, being that advanced. But then, uh, are there any negative impacts or negative sides to cloud seeding? Hmm. It's a very scientific <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, um, question that, you know, when you look at issues like this, you first you look at the advantages and then you look at the disadvantages. Uh, does the disadvantage outweigh the advantage or the advantages outweigh the disadvantage? You cannot have a perfect, you know, situation. But if you are crop seeding in order to produce food, you know, in order to, to help cool your community, uh, because heat waves come alongside so many issues. I mean, for us here in the country, soon you start hearing of cases of meningitis mm. in some parts of the country, you know, and, and all the health implications, the heat uh, stroke, heat stress and all. So if you can crowd seed in order to to reduce the impact of this, then it is it is not bad. Positive. Unfortunately, it is positive for us. We have everything in abundance, mm. and maybe it's because we have Thank everything in abundance that. that we take <laughs> advantage. We, I mean, we just relax and allow the situation to be to be what it is. It's unfortunate mm -hmm. um, when. Um, Hussein, I was talking about the technology. I, I mean, we have all the money. We can buy the plane, ah. the salt, and just fly them <laughs> up there. Fly. <laughs> fly them up there and drop them wherever we see the cloud. And it attracts the water body. And so uh, I'm saying this because uh, we have some fragments of Nigerian society uh, that are dubanized, if you like, uh, like the Medjugorje Axis. Uh, there are places that, that don't get as much rain and, and other axes of Sokoto leading to Niger Republic and all. Maybe it's time for us to start thinking of how to to begin to, to transfer technology. Making, <laughs> making our own rain. You know, since, sincerely, I, I, I will disagree with you on one thing. Mm. When you travel to Katsina and you are getting towards the border, the Jibia, with, with the Jibia right? On this side of the border, it is very dry. Mm. But when you cross over and you are getting into Niger, it's greener. They, reduce, they receive low rainfall, even less than what we receive on this side. So why is theirs greener and ours very dry? No, that's another mm. It's question. local technology. Mm. It's local technology. And it's what we can do. And we've been doing in the past. Okay. Yes, unfortunately, you know, with easy money from crude oil, I would say, <laughs> we abandoned everything. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, there with Dave, uh, Dave Mike, he has my middle name. Terungwa. Yes, <laughs> uh, Taking us all through. Uh, luckily, we have uh, a president elect, hopefully. Uh, if the Supreme Court doesn't obtain the results, we are not trying to. Well, he has been declared, so it's safe for us to say a president elect oh. who had promised to recharge the lake, the lake um, hmm. basin. And maybe that will be, begin to help to address some of the challenges on our own part in terms of uh, uh, climate. But this is the much uh, we can take today. Uh, the issues of climate are very dear to us at Trust Television. We will continue to visit amidst all the noise mm. around political happenings or, or economic um, development that can sometimes pander to deceive uh, and take away attention from the very serious issues of life that affect more of our citizens and then who wins the election or who doesn't. Thank you very much for finding time to be okay. with us. Um, myself and Lucy and I will find time to come and do a crash course on how to adapt <laughs> to these climate changes. Clearly you are adapting. Uh, and we hope that when next we call you to discuss issues around the climate, you'll find time to be with us in the studio. Thank you. Thank you.